The market moves slightly lower into support. Can the bulls hold? This is Invest with Jacob. Okay, guys, so in yesterday's video, we talked about the potential for a bullish breakout, and the bulls tried to take it, and I told you if they came back down below 42.90 that that would be a failure, and that's what we saw as the market did come back down toward our support areas and what looks like the bigger ABC we talked about. Now the question is, can the bulls hold support? I'll get into that in just one second, but first, if you're new here, welcome to the show, guys. My name is Jacob Gabbard, and this is Invest with Jacob, where we use Elliott Wave Theory to break down the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. I highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below so that you can get our daily S&P updates, our trade setups, and our buy alerts. All right, guys, before we jump into the analysis, I do share these with you from time to time. I shared this one yesterday, and then I got another one today. This is what we're all about in our room. We help people actually learn how to trade. We teach them how to trade. We help them understand Elliott Wave. We want you to be successful because we want our room to be the best out there, and we want people to actually be able to be in control of their money and understand how the market works. If this is something you're interested in, please stay tuned for later in the video. Otherwise, let's jump into the chart and take a look. Okay, guys, so here we are on the five-minute futures chart for the S&P 500. And yesterday, we did have that setup for them to take it directly higher. You can see here they did try to break out. They got up and hit the area we want them to hit, but then they fell down back through the 4290 area, which was a failure at that point. From 4290, they continued to fall, as you would expect once they broke that support level. So that's why we give the two routes uh, in each video or the two paths, the two um, potentials, because when this broke out and hit the number you want it to hit, it got up to 4303 or 4304, which is where you'd want it to be. Now you know that once we're below 4290, we get a failure. And that's what we saw as a failure for the rest of the day. And so that's the reason we give the potential guys for uh, the bears and the bulls so that you know where to switch your views and where to understand when the market changes in the short term. So overall, we're still looking this as a looking at this as a wave three. It's just how we're viewing this kind of move here. The primary would be that it's an A, B, C down towards 4267. They got very close to that at the close. They can still push down all the way to 4253. Remember, that's the 618. And as long as they stay above 4253, they are bullish up toward the 4230 to 50 area, or 4330 to 50 area. So the 618, just like it played up here at 4290, once it failed there, we saw a failure to the downside. Same thing would happen here. If 4253 does break to the downside, we would see a failure. But we're counting this as an ABC. And then we would look for the start to a five wave move higher here to complete the move up toward 4320 to 4350 um, in that area to complete the move up. Now, there are a couple of alternatives. It is possible, although I think extremely unlikely. So take this alternative with a grain of salt. But it is possible until we break this low that we did get wave four down. And this was wave one. And then you have an ABC running flat here and as long as they stay above this this would be wave two okay and then you look for the one two setup to break out in three towards the 4240 to 50 area after that again they came down and almost broke this low but not quite and as soon as they do it invalidates that count and i just don't think that this is an impulsive move off the low and they have nowhere to go down so i don't think that that's really a viable count but something to keep an eye on because they technically have not broken this low the much more likely alternate count is that we did get a uh, five wave move down here. We got a wave two up, and then we're getting a wave one of three to start. Then you look for a wave two of three back up that fails, and then you would look for a move, a strong move down in wave three. Okay, and this would be of a micro wave one. This wouldn't be a big wave three like we're expecting. We're still trying to build out wave one to the downside if that's going to be the case, and that will take quite a while. So overall. The two potentials are an ABC down into that 4267 to 4253 area, and then we'd look for a sharp move higher over the 4320 to 50 area. However, if they cannot hold 4253, okay, we would look for them to uh, push down, give us a bounce in what we would call two of three, and then break down and really take out some downside targets and some downside support to tell us that the move down has started. So 42.53, a very key level for the bulls to hold and bears to break. Over on the NASDAQ. All right, on the NASDAQ, they did break down below their upper support, that 14.472 area. And when they broke that, again, we saw failure. And that's what you would expect to see. You see the, the move down. And now that is a little bit of a warning to the people in the queues that 
they are starting to fizzle out up here at the top. We'll still need to see a little more follow through because we still have the potential for this to be off the low, this one, two, uh, wave three, and then a wave four down towards 14.045 to as deep as 13.845. So they got to break 13.845 to really start um, putting some worry in the NASDAQ camp. But we can see a wave four pull back into this area, and then one final push up toward that 14.900 area on the NASDAQ and wave five to complete its move off of the lows. And then we look for a rollover from the NASDAQ for the, from there. So that's what we would look for. Those are the two potential paths for the NASDAQ. They need to break through 13.845. And for the ES, they really need to break through that 42.53 uh, uh, area in order to get the move down started and start to send out more warning signals to the bulls. Otherwise, the bulls can hold support and take this higher to 43.30 to 50 on the ES as well as 14.9, 14.770 on the NASDAQ. Guys, if you love the information that I put out in these videos and you want real-time market updates from me, you need to check out investwithjacob.com. There's a link down in the description. Go ahead and click that link and it'll take you right over to the website. Once you're there, Check out our membership plans area. We have two incredible plans, and they both come with a seven-day free trial because I want you to get in there. I want you to make sure you love it and become part of the trading team before you ever spend a penny, and you can cancel at any time. Now, to be clear, both of these monthly memberships do include our Elliott Way for Beginners course. However, if you don't want to become a monthly member and you just want to buy the Elliott Wave for Beginners course, it's an outstanding course. It's 25 videos where I go over exactly how to set up your chart, how to use other tools along with Elliott Wave to confirm what you're seeing. And it's Elliott Wave the way I use it and teach it to call out these targets that hit all the time. And it's really a beneficial tool for anyone wanting to learn Elliott Wave or wanting to become an Elliottician, which is what we call people who use Elliott Wave theory. However, again, it is included in both rooms. And in that first room, my Invest with Jacob room, you get all of my real-time market updates, all of my buy and sell alerts, all of your Elliott Wave questions answered, a midday video where I go over exactly where we are in the counts live and answer all of your questions, as well as the training material you just saw. We trade the SPY and the QQQ and we swing trade, which means our trades can last anywhere from a few days to a few months. So we don't trade quite as often as a day trading room does. However, if you are looking for day trading as well as individual stocks, you need to check out PT's Throne Room. In there, you get everything you get in the Invest with Jacob room, as well as day trading, individual stocks, and PT's reduced risk binary method that just crushes the market. He gets you in at a small price and gets you huge multiples on your money, and it's how he structures the tri trade that's so unique, something you kind of have to see to understand. That's another reason we give you that seven-day free trial. He also started a challenge account where he put $4,000 into an account trading mini ES futures, showing you how to build a small account into a large retirement or savings account. Guys, we would love to have you in these rooms, just like the people you saw at the beginning of the video, because we want to help you, and we would all love to make money together. All right, key takeaways for today. ES, the bulls need to hold 42.53, and then we'd look impulsively higher towards 43.30 to 50. However, if they cannot hold 42.53, we would look for the bears to try to get a 1-2-1-2 setup to the downside that would start taking out support and telling us that the top is in. Over on the NASDAQ, same type of setup, only a little bit um, different in the sense that the NASDAQ is in a different phase. They would look for a move down to 14.045 to potentially as deep as 13.845, but a break of 13.845 is a severe warning to the bulls that the move up in the NASDAQ is fizzling and we're starting to look lower. However, if the bulls can hold one of those levels or above those levels, we still can see a push toward the 14.7 to 14.900 areas. Guys, that is the market update for today. I will talk to you tomorrow.